Before we get into today's video, I want to go ahead and say something. For the first time in The Wife is a Gaming, I have made a revised rating for one of the characters who I reviewed previously in Wife is a Gaming. That character is Sangonomiya Kokumi. Her original rating back then was a 2 in appeal, a max in charm, and a 2 in ability. Now, all ratings are based on a scale of 1 to 3. However, I will go ahead and say that uh, I really kind of underrated her and treated her kind of a little too harshly, as a matter of fact. Now, moving on over to the appeal. So, I want to bump that up to a max rating, a 3 out of 3 for Kokomi, because really, she's just beautiful to look at. She's very pretty, not only that... She's just amazingly cute, and she's beautiful, she's elegant. I, You could say I've grown more in love with her design at the end of the day. So, yeah, to add in the cuteness, to add in the beauty, to add in the elegance, to add in this nice blend of the three that I just mentioned, it's just amazing to say the least. And yeah, she is amazing to look at. And I will say, max rating on Kokomi's appeal. As for ability, yes, she is the best healer in the game. But as a matter of fact, uh, you have to account when it comes to her lore and her professions and her involvements within the storylines, especially the event limited storylines. And taking in that to consideration, we have decided the new rating for Sanganomiya Kokomi will be a max rating throughout, max on appeal, max on charm, and max on ability. So with that totally said, let's get right on going to the video. Welcome, the Gamer Man's Lounge. Awaken to play. Hopefully things are going well for you guys. As for me, welcome to the Gamer Man's Lounge. And today, we're going to be traveling onto the Traversaire with Waifus of Gaming Traversaire. Roll that intro here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and address something really, really quick. Now, one, I'm not feeling too great. I uh, feel like uh, shit. Uh, so I ended up with a cold. I ended up with a fever. I did took some Tylenols, so I think it's a matter of taking it easy and resting up some more. So as a result, I decided to uh, leave it up to other people to pretty much handle things. And today, uh, we're going to be revisiting Genshin Impact, and we're going to be traveling the world of Teyvat. And yeah, let's go ahead and adventure deep. Today in the Traversaire, we travel the world of Teyvat and revisit previously reviewed characters and waifus of gaming. And however, shall we start things off? Let's begin with Eula, a great sword user with Cryo Element. She is best known for being one of the most sexiest characters released, and she is also known for a heavy focus towards physical damage in a game known for mixing elemental attacks. That detail we could get to later. We do need to remember, we do need to get our daily commissions, grind our resin to burn off. Also, our battle pass events, Spiral Abyss, I'm pretty sure you get it. So we begin to adventure off past Mondstadt's entrance through the gates and bridge. Now, hold on for a minute. So before we do that, let's head on over to Samara region where we will be looking at another Cryo Vision user known for her shields. So today we are going to be discussing about Lila. Mm right now. So, Layla in regular is a calm but often sleep-headed. Okay. She does have a hidden personality that awakens from sleep, and this leads to jobs she is tasked with being done. A fascinating mistress at best. She will be essentially useful for someone who wish to deep dive. That uh, someone is going to be our enemy and as a result, will be occasionally hostile. For the first time in Waifus of Gaming and the Trefasea, we take a look at an enemy waifu that is non-playable and will attack any player on sight. The Mere Maiden. The Mirror Maiden. Associated with the Fatui, they utilize ways of attack via mirror-related abilities that also blend with Hydro. The Fatui in which the Mirror Maidens have association with the Fatui, as I say again, the Fatui being associated with the Nation of Cryo, in which 
we will find out. They're from Shneznaya. I pray and hope you pronounce that right, but anyway, let's get right on going. Mirror Maidens will utilize ranged attacks, including its most devastating ever, spawning mirrors and firing off beams that bounce off the mirrors, thus repeatedly damaging the player. They will also trap you in a field and will teleport from one spot to another for distance. The Mirror Maidens are the highest in appeal from other female Fatui, thick thighs, midriff, and a quantity of gold milk. Now, Layla's shields have been useful, but now we move on over to Eula's team. It is time for our turn. More speed. We have Pokémon spawn in the healing jellyfish that will also apply Hydro before turning on over to Eula to freeze the maiden using her elemental skill. Now it's time to combo into the Elemental Burst. Because of the Elemental Skill and Burst, Eula now gets two marks where if she holds the Skill button this time, this is where two projectiles will crash in, bringing in additional physical damage. Also noting, while her Burst is enabled, every attack begins to build the big sword-like projectile, when activated, after a set of time, can cause a devastating burst of physical damage to those around her. Hence, she is the physical damage focused DPS. We now hover on over to the raided Shogun, the Electro Archon who is not really good at cooking, but that cleavage sword though. The raided Shogun is the best sub DPS in support for Eula as Eula needs raided Shogun. Now hold on a minute, that is when it comes to the Eula raided Shogun duo team. Now back on over to the second in team, the Raiden Shogun looks over Inazuma as the land's goddess, a polearm user that can spawn her sword from a cleavage like a magic trick from a goth magician, mommy, you try to look respectfully. The best support good enough for the team would be none other than Sucrose. Ah yes, Sucrose. An often really shy animo catalyst <laughs> user, an alchemist that can be clumsy at times. Rather a cute and adorable four eyes that is great for crowd control, and excelling in the thought game. Fan artist had a field day. She can not only amplify supported elements, but bring people in the center. Perfect for Raiden Shogun's elemental burst. However, for that time being, we need to build up the Raiden Shogun's ring from behind. The best damage out is the burst. As soon as we have it charged, the best. Till then, it's best if we try to conserve energy as much as possible. Stand clear! There is no escape! Vengeance will be mine! Eye for an eye! Now with things being built, it's time we invade this Fatui camp. You don't just go on another civilization and start causing trouble. Kokomi spawns the healing jellyfish. She brings in the sheep under the center with her elemental burst. And then, the wrath of the Raiden Shogun. And for the one guy to go, Yula ended up picking that guy off. Before we move on, we need to focus more on our healer, Sanganomiya Kokomi a strategist and divine priestess looking over Watatsumi Island. A moveset that is met with the style as if she's swimming in water, but she is in midair. Her debut as a playable character was a mess. She was really done dirty. But when it came to her first rerun, after the introduction of the Ocean Hued Glam artifact set, the reception for her became improved. As a matter of fact, it became approved to be the fact that it is essential to have her around. 
She is essentially the best and most beautiful and admirable healer out of many other healer across games. Oh, good thing we stepped in. Sorry we came late. But anyway, with the team fully explained, Eula and team will take on two Law Geralds, a Geo and Electra, two big boy Hill Geralds. No Unlike escape. the fanfic, they will be doomed to become the ones who receive the penetration. Pokemi spawns in the jellyfish, the Shogun runs up the elemental skill, and Eula begins her ult, rendering her invincible to one of the Law Geralds' devastating attacks due to her animation invincibility. The ult combo will come into effect, but Yula must be near both Lower Trolls in order to bring physical damage. The Geo Big Boy falls hard, and the Electro remains. However, in a turn, and especially as soon as Sucrose unleashes the elemental burst that would also be known to amplify, the righted Shogun unleashes the burst. And despite the resistance to Electro on Electro, it was not enough to save the Lower Troll, and thus, he was eliminated. Now, let's take a look at a world boss. A dinosaur dragon-like son of a bitch, known to be the Primo Geovishab. This big-ass lizard can utilize other elements, so best be careful. But this one is aligned with Pyro. One thing I do want to remind. Don't attack it when it's waking up. All you're doing is jack shit, except chipping away at health. From here, we shut the fuck up and watch the fight. Vengeance will be mine! Dude, I feel like shit. What the hell are you guys doing? Okay. You know what? Don't. Okay. Well, yeah. Don't worry. I'll take it easy. Drink plenty of liquids. Eat soups from left and right. Take our, uh, take some medications or Tylenols or Mucinexes or etc. So, yeah. Uh, just uh, take it easy. Get it some rest. Drink plenty of liquids and yada, 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 yada. Because, yeah, uh, hopefully I will feel better by the next time I work on another video. That's all, and I will be looking forward to you in the next video. Peace out.